students and parents both to discuss, but uh, I, I think you want to be an askable parent so your child, your children can come and ask you anything. But for me, what's worked for me is to bring up that uncomfortable conversation myself. You know, you, you bring up the conversation, get the child uncomfortable, and you use whatever humor you can to bring it up. A lot of times we'll be in the car riding along one of those uh, Nicki Minaj or whoever songs will come on and we turn the radio off. What we've done is we've effectively missed a teachable moment with our kids. If you got a little kid or whoever's singing something, ask the kids, what does that mean? Have them enlighten you to the jargon and the language that's going on today. And that opens up, it segues into a conversation. So that's how I think that that works. It's for you as an adult to bring it up. It's uncomfortable either way. I think it starts at an early age. I think you have to talk to your kids at be honest with them. I mean, tell them what the body part is. It's not a teaching. You know, it's, it's what it is. You, you talk to them and be honest with them and tell them exactly what it is, the proper name. And it, and it doesn't start at the ages 12 or 13. It starts when they're younger, when they're, when they're babies, when they're being potty trained. You just be honest with them and, and talk to them and tell them. And it is uncomfortable because nobody wants to think about their precious little baby out there having sex and getting a sexually transmitted disease and all that stuff. But you, it, it's something that you just, you just got to be honest with. Them. I use, use both, all of y'all mentioned, you know, as far as like, you know, being, they're being supported in the community. What, um, what role does the church or other religious institu institutions play in helping receive, reduce sexually transmitted disease rates in teenage pregnancy? Not just churches, because there's a lot of different other religious you know, institutions in the community. What role do y'all do you see them playing in, in, in all of this? Again, if sexuality is a difficult thing for us to discuss between parent and child, imagine how difficult it is to discuss sexuality in church. I think, me personally, that they should talk more about sexuality in church because it's a part of life. Um, you know, so that, that's where I come from as far as the church is in, but I think that they need to be more open in their discussions with youth about sexuality and those things. If, if any of uh, y'all do go to church or whatever religious you know, institution y'all go to, do y'all discuss stuff like that in church? Um, I can't say that we discuss it in church, but um, the church that I attend, we do have um, days where we have um, different people come out and do the testing where if they come to get do the testing, they get tickets to concerts or they get different things to make them come and want to do testing and want to be involved with the church. Um, question for the Lords. Um, do you believe that abstinence is a realistic goal for y'all? Being you and just not doing nothing. When I say not doing nothing, I'm talking about no sexual contact. <laughs> you know, and then let me just say this too, because a lot of people are under the impression that, you know, if they're doing other stuff, they may not be having intercourse. They, they act like that's not sex. I mean, when I grew up, there was females that would do everything else but intercourse, and we walk around acting like they're virgin. You understand what I'm saying? So as far as abstinence and having no kind of sexual contact, you think that's realistic for y'all today? I don't think that's very realistic at all. I mean, I'm not gonna say that there's people that, I'm, I'm not gonna say nobody will do it because there probably are a select few that don't do anything at all and that just love their bodies enough to respect themselves. But as far as my community and the school, um, I don't think that's realistic. I think we need the knowledge because people aren't listening to the abstinence only. And yes, it's a beautiful decision to make if you want to be abstinent, but we also need to know we have options, like I said before. So I think it's important to know comprehensive sex education as well as abstinence combined instead of separating the two. Because I think if you bring it together, the abstinence and the um, comprehension Comprehensive 
sex together, I think it will work better than separated. And, and I would have to agree because now it seems like there's a battle line drawn between abstinence education and uh, comprehensive sex education. Pretty much what abstinence education is saying to the young people out there that don't want to fall victim or you know, fall victim to the pressures is that it's okay not to have sex. You know, despite all the messages that you're being bombarded with on MTV, Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, it's okay not to have sex. Donald, do you think that's that's a realistic realistic goal? I, I think it's realistic. I think um, I think it's uh, hard in our environment, but it's realistic. Uh, it's just it's a it's a war, kind of. It seems like it's a war. But what you mean? Like all oh, like the rappers and the media, like Lil Wayne and um, that one chick. I forgot you. Yeah, Mickey, Nicki Minaj, like all that, you see it, you hear it, your peers pressure you, but it's realistic. It, people can do it, I, I guess. I can do it. Them girls at school be looking good? Of course. <laughs> is, that, is that pressure right there? Yeah. It, it is. Now, uh, See how much pressure that is? He can't even finish his, his but I think, I think, I think, I, I never really looked at it in terms of the way he just presented in terms of it being war. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it kind of makes it real because that's what he actually, he's actually, he's actually seen it as, you know, a fight between do I or don't. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I just thought that was a very interesting way to put it. Because, Anybody else want to touch that? In regards to that being realistic, absence, not having sex, is that so, realistic? So basically what, what, we, what we've come to on the panel is that we think that absence education and comprehensive sex education should be taught together as opposed to separately because it makes the children feel like they have to make a choice one way or the other. Does anybody not know what comprehensive sex education means? Raise your hand. By definition. Okay. Uh, can somebody explain what that means? comprehensive sex education. There are plenty of people from Planned Parenthood in the audience that could answer that question. Okay. Um, <laughs> we were told um, to answer it that Okay. <laughs> okay, that's please. Um, comprehensive sex education is going along the lines of we do um, teach abstinence as well. But we want you to know that there are condoms out there available. We're going to teach you the proper way to use them. We're going to um, expose you to birth control, expose you to the um, other services that Planned Parenthood offers, such as rapid HIV testing and other STI testings as well. And we're going to teach you about that instead of just telling you, no, you can't do this. We're not going to tell you you can't do something. But if we're going to tell you, if you decide to do this, this is what you can do to help. Um, do you think that schools should allow sexually transmitted disease testing on the premises? Uh, personally, no. Why, why not? Because I, I think that they should be referred to go someplace else and assisted to go someplace else, but I think that education and Education is one thing and that's another thing. I just don't think that it's a good idea because I think that people will be out there protesting and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Just to get tested for yeah, sex and It'll be people day. out there protesting and fighting and kids can't get into school and all that other stuff. It'll be too much stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I just think that, that I don't think that it should be. I, that's the way I personally think. Does anybody think that they should have tested? Okay. So what you think? Personally, I think they should because a lot of kids in our school, there's a high rate of kids going to school that has herpes that a lot of people don't know of. People that you may know or may not know may have it. Like, you see a lot of kids that look weird, they wear dark makeup, they probably don't even have it because, oh, they probably got it, or oh, she doing it, she doing that. They probably not even doing it. 